much. Uh, this is a nice attendance this evening. And with no further ado, let me introduce Nancy Walker. Nancy's the executive director of the Funeral Consumers Alliance of Central Texas. If you've been a longtime member of this organization, you'll recall the days when it was known as AMBIS. Since 2010, Nancy has given presentations on end-of-life topics for a wide variety of organizations and communities in the Austin area. She has spoken to all five UT OLE programs twice a year through the Lifetime Learning Institute. She teaches an eight season course, session course, to help people get their ducks in a row. Nancy earned an MA in English at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and a BA in English at Tulane. Before retiring, she developed in-house training programs for two state agencies here in Austin. And for those of you who lived here in 2018, you may recall that Nancy's last visit was then. So we welcome you back, Nancy, and thank you so much for your time tonight. Hi, everyone. I am delighted to be back, and this is an interesting experience. I sort of feel a little bit uh, trapped up here on the stage, <laughs> but we'll just carry on and have a good communication, and I do intend for there to be a great deal of time left after I do this brief PowerPoint presentation for you to ask questions, because that's when things really get interesting. I would like to introduce my friend of 30 years, a colleague uh, who is a board member on the Funeral Consumers Alliance uh, list of volunteers. This is Barbara Juan James, and she's been very helpful to me this evening, as she always is, and she will be advancing the PowerPoint slides for me. So here we go. Let's just yeah, kick One on. of my duties I forgot to mention, to, uh, for those of you who came in a little later, please turn your phones off. And I do want to make sure, does everybody have a purple and white booklet? No. Okay, Kathy, Kathy's going to help you out. We have brought 50, so hopefully we're going to have enough of them. And then also this really pretty card. We want you all to have a card to remember us by and maybe to share with a friend to give them a basic idea of what we're doing here with the Funeral Consumers Alliance. And if there's two people from a particular apartment, um, could you just share and just keep one rather than two? So thank you. Okay, so all you need to do is hold your hands up and Barbara will come and give you whatever you need. Did everybody bring at least one question? Raise your hands if you already know you're gonna ask a question during the extended Q&A session. Do I see any hands going up? <laughs> All right, there's a real enthusiast in the back row there. We'll make sure we'll ask you twice. I think they're making a video, a video with 30 seconds of silence. Oh my. <laughs> As the years have advanced, I've come to appreciate silence more and more. It's kind of sweet, isn't it? That's where you can hear the music of the spheres. Okay, Barbara, come up and punch this PowerPoint computer thingy for me. All right, so the first thing we want you to know just a little bit about the organization. We've been around since 1964, and as Kathy said, for a long time we were known as the Austin Memorial and Burial Information Society, which compresses so nicely to the word AMBIS. But then in 2014, we changed our name 
to the Funeral Consumers Alliance of Central Texas. Everyone involved with uh, FCA is a volunteer, including me. And we do it because we think it's really important for our area to have a sort of consumer report kind of organization to help people understand more about end of life topics and what their rights are when dealing with funeral homes. All right, as you can see, we have a five county service area. Just geographically speaking, we're most active in Travis and Williamson counties, but uh, we do go out into the other counties too. We love invitations to do presentations like this evening's. Or next slide, okay. There is a National Funeral Consumers Alliance, and then all across the country, there are more than 70 affiliates. We are one of the 70 affiliates, and just so you'll know, there's two other affiliates in Texas. One is up in Plano, and so they're uh, very knowledgeable about the funeral homes up in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and then there is another one down in San Antonio. Next slide. Okay, well, uh, Kathy pretty well covered this. Uh, we basically go talk to anyone that wants to uh, hear what we have to say. And that's a wide, uh, diverse population and different residential communities, houses of worship, and so forth. Next slide. Okay, and again, as Kathy mentioned, uh, twice a year I teach an eight session class through the Lifetime Learning Institute. You might want to jot that down. A Lifetime Learning Institute is a fantastic volunteer-run organization that puts together a fabulous and diverse selection of classes for people 55 and older. Uh, there's the spring session and the fall session. And imagine you get eight sessions, two-hour sessions of information for $30. I mean, you just can't beat it and the topics are just fascinating. So those of you who Google, <laughs> you might want to Google Lifetime Learning Institute or their website simply is lliaustin.org. Uh, right now the classes have already begun for the fall session, but believe me, there will be a spring session and on we go. And then also I've talked to the different groups, uh, Osher, groups uh, like UT Quest, UT Forum, and so forth. And I've done six session seminars and then single event presentations like what I'm doing this evening. Next slide. Okay, I, co I covered that. All right. I'm so eager in a way to get through this so we can really uh, get into the Q&A, which is just so much fun. We have uh, on our website a whole variety of resources for you, including advanced directive documents. Now, we don't put financial advanced directive documents and uh, wills, anything having to do with money, we don't go there. <laughs> we really suggest that you talk to your lawyer or your accountant. We just don't want to give any uh, guidance about financial things but we are big into medical advanced directives. How, how many of you have heard of living wills? Yeah, living will. That's where you specify what kinds of medical treatment you would or would not want if you're in such a condition that you can't speak for yourself. And then the companion document where you appoint a healthcare agent is called the medical power of attorney in Texas. So these medical directives are on our website. All you have to do is click on the directives tab at the top of the screen. And then we even have directives that you can specify what you want done with your body after you've passed away. How about that? Talk about controlling. <laughs> I'm dead and I'm still calling the shots. Well, those are called disposition directives and they are also out on our website under the directives tab. All right, next, Barb. I think what we're best known for, I, c I consider it our flagship publication, is our funeral home price survey. We go out every year and pick up price lists from every funeral home in those five counties that we serve. And then we have worksheets and we 
transfer figures and make sure everything is just on even par, that we're comparing always apples with apples. And we give people on in the survey, in the, in the price chart portion, uh, we show them basically what the out the door price is for different kinds of final arrangements. And this uh, price list, which uh, hospice social workers are so grateful for, that they carry them in their basic backpack, um, has saved people thousands of dollars. And here is a very uh, telling example on this screen where if you just want to be cremated and maybe have a memorial service somewhere later that it doesn't have anything to do with the funeral home, just what's called a direct cremation, in our area, you can get that service for $595, or as the price chart indicates, you can go with another funeral home and pay over $4,000 for exactly the same thing. Okay, the next slide, Barb. All right, I do want to talk to you a little bit about your rights. I think it's very important to know what your rights are when dealing with funeral homes. Most people aren't aware that they have any rights, but that's what that purple and white booklet is all about. The Federal Trade Commission is the author of the funeral rule, which spells out those rights, which are described in detail in that booklet. My favorite page in the booklet is right there in the center. If you open the, the purple and white booklet, right, right to the middle where the staple comes through, What do you see? Yes, you see an invitation to do a little research, hopefully while you're still feeling up to doing the research, right? Not two minutes before a death is going to occur, but when you're still feeling a bit frisky, like coming to this uh, webinar. And compare prices. Because the good news is that funeral homes are required by law to give you prices over the phone. So if you know <clears throat> you've given some thought to what you want in terms of your final arrangements, you can call any funeral home you want and just say, um, I'm considering this kind of final arrangement. I, maybe you want a visitation at a house of worship or you'd prefer to have it at the funeral home. Maybe you want um, a burial and casket and so forth. You tell them what you want and they have to itemize the prices for you. It can be very illuminating. Okay, Barbara, thank you. So not only does the funeral rule require that prices be given to you over the phone, but guess what? You have the right to walk into any funeral home in the United States, hold your hand out and say, may I please have your price list, your general price list, and they are required to give it to you, no questions asked. You don't have to be uh, escorted by the receptionist into the conference room, would you like a cup of coffee? Let me get a funeral director to come and talk to you, blah, 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 blah. You can be in and out of there, and believe me, I've been in and out many times in five minutes. Just hold the door. I'm in, I'm out. Okay, next, thank you. And as I said, um, they, can, uh, they must also give you prices over the phone. Of course, now that can get interesting because you sort of need to know uh, some things to ask for. How many people, just kind of give me an idea, how many people are kind of interested in cremation? Yes, cremation is becoming increasingly popular in this country. So there's just one little tricky thing you might want to make a note. Not all funeral homes put the crematory fee with the price they show on the price list for a direct cremation. Now, it's not necessarily that you're trying to be tricky, but if they don't own their own crematory and they have to a contract with a crematory operation in our area, then that's a cost that they have to pay to the 
crematory provider. So sometimes they put the crematory fee in a different location on the price list. That's the kind of thing that when we pick up those price lists and we produce our survey, we make sure that in that column showing the variety of prices for direct cremation, it always includes the crematory fee. And sometimes we have to shop around a little on, on the list to find it, but we find it and we put it in there. So if you're calling for cremation pro, uh, prices, be sure to say, is the price you're giving me including the crematory fee? Okay, next slide. Oh, this is a juicy one. I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many times when um, people come out to pick up the body of a deceased person, uh, let's just say someone died at home, they put down a whole bunch of papers on the table. And they say, well, before we leave, there's some papers and authorizations you need to sign. And I'm telling you, people are not really in their calmest frame of mind at that time. And who knows, there could be an embalming authorization among those papers on the table. Well, if you're going to be cremated and you're not going to have a public viewing ahead of time, there's not a reason in the world to be cremated, except maybe to put an extra thousand dollars in the pocket of the funeral home. So it's just important. You mean embalming. Excuse me, yes, thank you. Um, embalming, um, as I said, is not required by law, but if there is going to be a public viewing, you'll find that funeral homes will often say, yes, we know it's not required by law, but it's our policy. We don't uh, permit the public viewing of an unembalmed body. But even so, that can be negotiated. And there's no reason why a body that has been refrigerated, <clears throat> and by refrigerated, I don't mean frozen, okay? Just refrigerated, kept, kept at a cool temperature, cannot be taken out of the refrigeration uh, unit and put out for a viewing. It's just that funeral homes aren't used to doing that. But believe me, it can be done. <clears throat> Thanks, Barb. Oh, and this is, oh, this is a good one, too. Um, when you get into the funeral planning conference, especially if you're interested in ground burial of a body, they will just kind of move you along. And now it's time that we've talked about this and that. Let's just go now and look at the, uh, the casket selection. They, it's just so smooth and they don't bother to mention, oh, by the way, if you want to buy the casket from another source, uh, you're free to do so. So caskets uh, typically at funeral homes are more expensive than they are from other sources, and you would be amazed. Costco.com. Now don't go back by the bottle of water and the Kleenex and stuff and be looking for caskets and urns against the back wall in the Costco store. They're not there but they are on the website. That's also true Walmart. They don't have them in the store, but they have them on the website. Even Amazon, believe it or not, sells caskets and urns. Now, there is an option to actually, uh, let's look at the next slide, Barb. Um, you can use the lower price you find from another source often to negotiate a lower price at the funeral home. You know, suppose you fall in love with a metal casket that's sort of a beautiful dusty rose color, but you find one that looks just like it on another website and it's $700 less. So guess what? That's what I'd say. Well, this is a lovely casket, but I've done a little research and I found another Dusty Rose casket at XYZ website and um, I will um, buy it there unless you can come down on your price. And believe me, most of the time they will. All right. And then there are handmade coffins. A lot of people for religious reasons or just uh, because it's just what their value system is, 
They want to be buried in something simple. Or maybe they want a green burial. They want to be buried at a green burial cemetery where everything that goes in the ground has to be biodegradable. So no metal caskets, no grave liners, none of that stuff. Everything has to be able to biodegrade. So a simple pine coffin would be um, an excellent choice. And there's plenty of diagrams and there's plenty of people that know how to make them. Just as a fun thing, um, believe it or not, if you went out and you Googled um, bookcase ca uh, casket, there are caskets that can be used as bookcases until the time comes that they're needed to be caskets. And then people just remove the shelves and there you go. Yes, it's true. And oh, so, um, since you're enjoying that one, let me tell you, there are coffee table caskets. Mm -hmm. It's just amazing. But the point here is, you know, this kind of thing and, and kind of doing some research ahead of time is not typically done at the, what they call the time of need. That's okay, the person's died. Decisions need to be made, boom, boom, boom. And that's why when I, I always think so affectionately of Dacine Willman, who was um, very, an a very active volunteer with AMBIS. And she, uh, when I started with AMBIS in 2010, uh, Dacine already was an experienced presenter who went out and talked to groups just like you. And she would love to tell people, shop before you drop. All right, and believe it or not, the people that will be making final arrangements for you will really appreciate the fact that you specified what kinds of final arrangements you wanted and what kinds of prices you found and so forth and so on. All right. So as I mentioned, every January we go out and we pick up over 50 price lists. We bring them home and we put them, the prices on the worksheet and make sure we're always comparing like items and that creates the funeral home price survey. But there's actually more to it than just the price, uh, price chart. Uh, Barb, next slide. Okay, this is a 12, uh, a, excuse me, a 10 page document, see? I'm not gonna pull them all apart for you. I do double-sided copy. But even so, it's five sheets of paper printed on both sides. And the first two pages um, define for you in very precise detail, like when we say direct cremation prices, what do we mean by direct cremation? What's included? So when you look at these uh, prices and you, you have a very good educated idea about what that label in each column means. Okay, uh, next part. And then after the price chart, which takes up pages three through eight in the survey, are two pages of really useful information to help you become a savvy consumer. All right, next. So of course you wanna know, well, we're gonna get this. We're gonna get this survey. Well, here's the answer. For one thing, if you have access to the internet, you can go out to our website, which is all over the materials that I'm sharing with you this evening. Our phone number, our website, it's everywhere. You just go out to the home page and you look for that oval button, that blue button that looks just like that, where it says current surveys and you just click on that and you go right to the page that has the 2021 price survey and also the 2020 cemetery survey okay now if you want to uh, do it differently feel free you can email us at our office email and we will uh, send it to you as an email attachment or you can actually become a member and in our membership packet, we put 23 different good, good, helpful things. And one of them is the funeral home price survey. A burger? Okay, uh, typically when I do presentations, um, people, uh, 
grow to appreciate the importance of this information. We're the only people in town that get it, get into this and protect your rights as funeral consumers. And they go like, well, you know, what can we do to support the work that you're doing? And uh, one way to do that is to become a member. So um, I'm not pushing, I'm not recruiting, but I am telling you that if you would like to do that, um, uh, let's see, Kathy actually has a few membership applications. You could, Kathy Kelly, you could go to her at some point and just ask her to give you an application and you could mail it in. And here are some of the features and benefits of being a member. Uh, Barbara, go back for just a minute. <clears throat> Oh, my favorite one on that list is the last bullet. I can tell you, because I look into these things, that the most expensive column inch in the entire Austin State, American Statesman, is the obituary page. I mean, it is remorseless. And I have seen people pay more for an obituary that went about this deep right, on the page, maybe this, this deep one column? They pay more for that than they did for the cremation. So it is actually a tremendous benefit that we uh, remind our members from time to time, and they should tell their families, that uh, we post obituaries of any length and any kind, as many pictures as you want, and throw in a poll, and we'll put it all on our obituary page on our website at no cost. So right there is a tremendous cost savings. Okay. I'll just let you read that. Does any, is anybody, did, when you went to school and you were in kindergarten, did the teacher ever have this big tall book on the floor called Dick and Jane, remember that, with Spot and Sally? And it was just this big book with this big huge writing and the teacher would have us read that out loud. Does anybody remember Dick and Jane? Oh, I know you all are younger than I am. Well, well, <laughs> every year that becomes more and more true. All right. Okay, so as I said, if you think you might wanna join, I know we've got some members in here already, uh, but if you wanna join, ask Kathy for uh, a membership application. You can email, call us, or you can join online. There's a, a place to click to um, join or donate. Okay, Barb, next slide. Ah, my favorite part. <laughs> okay, so as far as I'm concerned, we can turn the PowerPoint off and let's just get to it. I don't know what effect this, I think I still have to pretty much stay in one place. Um, so what I'd like to do at this point um, is hand out a really fun handout that's going to be wonderfully interactive. <clears throat> now I promise you, uh, this, is, this is a discussion tool, not a test. <laughs> but I, can, I, I have to tell you, uh, when I read the evaluations that people turn in, after they take my class. More times than I can count, people have said, I didn't know what I didn't know. And so <clears throat> this uh, little uh, handout here is going to kind of help us with that. Oh, and I'm going to need someone, uh, Barb, you're going to need to bring one to me. <laughs> a question. Yes. If someone, a family wants, to, uh, say when I die, if the family just wants my body to go straight to cremation, how do they do that? You want to repeat the question? Yes, yeah, she said um, when she passes away, if her family wants her to be uh, cremated, uh, how do they do that? Well, um, the hospital 
Uh, if you die in a hospital, they're going to be asking the family to make a decision pretty quick, especially since hospitals, not all of them have morgues. Um, if, you have, if you die at home, uh, there's more time for the family just to kind of take a deep breath and maybe even say some more final goodbyes and so forth. But at a certain point, they're going to need to select a funeral home to come pick up your body. And the funeral home will take your body to their facility and put you in refrigeration, which is required by law that something be done within 24 hours to slow down decomposition of the body. And then there's another rule in Texas that you cannot be uh, cremated before 48 hours have passed. So you'll be in the cooler for a little while and they will uh, schedule a cremation time for you and get you cremated and then uh, call the family and say, come pick up uh, the cremated remains, which will be in a plastic box, unless the family supplies an urn to the funeral home and said, don't put, don't put her uh, ashes in the plastic box, put them in this urn instead, please. Does that answer your question? Pretty much. Okay. Merit, um, Betty, hold on a second. Out of state. Out of state. Yes, what if you die out of state? She's gonna be taken out of state, is that right? Okay, are you, are you going to have your body buried at another, uh, in another state? Yes. Okay, um, then you need to um, figure out what funeral home in that other state you want to uh, deal with to make arrangements to receive uh, your body and to take it to the cemetery, and then they will work with a funeral home uh, closer to your place of death. There will be uh, definitely a transferring fee and a transportation fee. Sure. Now, if you wanted to be cremated, by the way, since we have a lot of cremation people here, and you die um, out of state, it's much more cost effective to be cremated in the location where you passed away. And that's why I wanted you to know about the National Funeral Consumers Alliance, funerals.org, because if you go to the national website, there's a place where you can click to find where are these 70 affiliates that Nancy Walker mentioned. And you'll find there are other local FCAs like ours uh, in other states, and they can help your family uh, find the more affordable funeral homes to deal with in whatever area that is. Is there an FCA in uh, Minnesota? Um, frankly, I don't know. But with a few clicks, we could go out to funerals.org and find out. <laughs> sure. How about overseas? Well, overseas, you definitely want to um, notify the U.S. Embassy uh, that a death has occurred, and uh, they will be able to provide a lot of guidance about what to do. But again, um, to, to bring a body uh, and pay the transportation cost to bring a, bo a body back to the States just to have it cremated here, why would you do that, you know? So I guess the main thing is um, it could be very expensive if you die overseas and you want to be buried, body buried in a casket here in the United States, it will be a considerable expense. But the embassy will provide that guidance for you. If you die on a cruise ship, guess what? They have morgues. Isn't, it, isn't that a great tidbit of information for the next cocktail party or coffee clatch? You know, to lean forward on your elbow for somebody that uh, didn't show up this evening and say, hey, you want to hear something really kind of interesting? Did you know that cruise ships have morgues? <laughs> it's a good thing they do. Okay. Uh, can you give me some information about how you would find out if you wanted to donate your body to medical research? Yeah. And also, uh, if you do, do they cremate it? Do, are there any remains that go to the family or is 
Is that it? Okay, um, I have, I love to talk about whole body donation. And I have a, an excellent handout that I can send you. I would like you to uh, email me at office, office at FCACTX. It's right there on, the, uh, on all the handouts. And when uh, you email me, I will send you back this wonderful handout about whole body donation. And also, we can talk on the phone. But basically, um, there are several universities uh, med that train medical students that will, um, under certain circumstances, accept donated bodies from the Austin area. Uh, Dell Medical School does not yet have a whole body, uh, willed body program set up, and they get their their cadavers from um, the folks up in the Dallas area, the huge medical center up there. Um, the bodies are cremated at the end of um, their use in educating medical students. Sometimes it takes uh, two years to actually for the family to get the cremated remains back. There are other groups that um, I call them uh, body procurement organizations, such as Science Care, which is pretty well known. BioGift is another one. Uh, there's several, and again, they're on that handout that I can provide for you. Uh, the turnaround time on getting uh, the cremated remains back with those organizations is a lot quicker. Uh, basically, what they're doing is removing uh, organs and tissue that are being requested by various research groups for specific kinds of research. Again, it's a free cremation. With the universities, some of them do have a charge for mailing the cremated remains back to the family. And then there's the standalone forensics anthropology program down in San Marcos, where they do forensics research, and when you donate your body to them, uh, nobody gets anything back. Okay, but still there's no final arrangement expenses. The thing is, when people are interested in whole body donation, I always tell them, have a backup plan because you never really know what condition your body is going to be in at the time of your death. I mean, you just could have it all figured out, you filled out the application form and sent it in, and they said, well, yeah, everything looks pretty good. Okay, tell your family, here's a card, this is the number to call. Um, but then it turns out that um, you were actually in a car wreck and your body is um, terribly um, mutilated by the car wreck and suddenly it's all off. Uh, they can't use your body anymore. What a rude surprise. Or you may become extremely, because of some condition, uh, extremely emaciated or extremely uh, bloated. Again, that would disqualify you from being a whole body donor. So that's why uh, even if you do want to be a whole body donor, have a backup plan just in case. More questions? Yes, sir. Yes, in the back there. Here she comes. Yeah, yes, I'm wondering if you would go into a little more detail on something that you touched on a little bit mm -hmm. called green burial. Yes, green burial. We do have a green or natural burial cemetery out in Cedar Creek. It's called Eloise Woods. And their website is exactly that, eloisewoods.com. And everything that goes into the grave has to be biodegradable. Uh, the last time I looked at their website, their prices were on there. Um, everything operates pretty much the way it does with any other kind of cemetery that um, the funeral home will take uh, the body out there for burial. A lot of people that are buried in green cemeteries, including Eloise Woods, are wrapped in sh biodegradable shrouds, winding cloth kind of thing, or very simple uh, wood caskets, or even cardboard cremation containers. 
because um, a body that's going to be cremated cannot be put into the cremation chamber just as is. They can't just roll it in. They have to put it in what they call an alternative container, which basically is a rectangular shaped cardboard box with a lid and a reinforced base. And so in it goes. So when you get cremated remains back, Actually, there's a little bit of a cardboard container <laughs> in there with everything else. Um, did you need more information? Uh, yes. Uh, you mentioned, uh, I think it's a company called Eloise Woods. Is yes, it, it, that's the Natural Burial Cemetery out in Cedar Creek. That's the cemetery. Do you have yes. to go through uh, a funeral home here in town to, to <clears throat> in, in advance of the... Eloise Woods? Well, somebody, uh, there is such a thing which, you know, I'd have to come back and talk to you another hour about uh, home funerals where the families do the death care themselves and so forth. But even when a family does choose to do the death care, which requires a lot of pre planning, you need someone to help you uh, lift the body, move the body, just dress the body, bathe the body, all of this kind of stuff. Um, even so, uh, because of the, elect the Texas Electronic Registry, um, you usually need a funeral home or a county clerk to put information into the system to generate the death certificates. Thank you. You're welcome. You want to play with this for a little while? Let's see how we're doing. Okay. To protect public health, embalming is required by law. What do you think? Yeah. No, okay, that was slide number 7B, right? Funeral prices never go anywhere but up. True. Yeah, that's a big selling point to get people to buy prepaid funeral contracts. But let me tell you, in the 11 years that I've been involved with FCA, when I first came into the area in 2010, the least expensive cremation was about $1,000. But then some more affordable funeral homes came into the area, and now that same service is available for $5.95. Really, I promise. We have several in our area that are under $700. That's new. And uh, I myself, uh, before I ever became involved with this organization, I bought a prepaid funeral contract for $1,000. And then I got involved and prices came down and uh, I was very fortunate. Um, it was um, funded through an insurance company and so, you know, 18 years later, I contacted the insurance company and they said, oh, they were nice. They said, just send us a surrender form and we'll send your money back. And they did. Not everybody um, has this easy and straightforward a path. But anyway, we've been collecting price lists for a long, 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 long time, and uh, prices do not always go up, but it's a great uh, selling tool because most people think, of course they would. Why not? Everything else is going up, okay? All funeral homes charge about the same for funeral goods and services. Thank you, thank you. Wait till you see that funeral home price survey. You'll see in detail. Okay, there's no reliable way for me or my family to compare funeral home prices without calling or visiting each one. Is that true? No, FCA puts out a funeral home price survey. It's on our website and there's no charge for it. Okay, we want everyone over the age of 18 <laughs> to know about this funeral home price survey. Why? What's the mortality rate on the planet? What percentage of people on this planet are going to die? 100%. 100%. Okay? So even though it's a very difficult topic in our society, the root truth is, whether we talk about it or think about it or not, sooner or later, we're going to be planning funerals or someone's going to be planning one for us. So this information is very helpful, and we like you to have it sooner rather than later. Number five, funeral homes with websites. If they have a website, they are required to post their price list. What do you think? 
I wish it were. <laughs> Remember now, this is the funeral rule that was written in 1984 and actually became effective in 1986. It has not been significantly updated since then. And I don't know, I'm, I, do you remember when the typewriter that had the selectric ball that rotated, right? Instead of having to go like this every time you got to the end of the line on the typewriter, so much has changed. Cell phones, I mean, it's just, it just throws my head back how quickly technology is just changing the way we spend our time and do business in the world. So no, the funeral rule has not required people to put their price lists on their websites, but some of them do, especially the ones that have lower prices. They're very glad to put their prices out there. All right, six, if I want a funeral at my house of worship, I'll save money by selecting a funeral home close to that house of worship. What do you think? Good, I heard a false. Listen, one of the um, uh, uh, columns in our price survey tells you what the radius, the free radius that a funeral home will, how far will these people drive in one direction to get the job done, pick up the body and so forth. Typically, at least 30 miles so, you know, if you were going to have your bridge club meeting on Monday evenings at the funeral home, week after week after week, the location of the funeral home would be uh, pretty important. But since hopefully we're not going to use funeral home services too often, um, if they can drive 25 or 30 miles without imposing an additional mileage charge, think how ex that expands your radius as you're looking around to find which funeral home will give you the best service and maybe the best prices if you're interested in that. We know there are other things besides price, but price is a big factor. And I've gone out and talked in residential communities where people could pretty well afford anything that they wanted, and I can't tell you how often they say, I want to leave most of my money above ground. So, and sometimes, you know, I go and talk to low-income communities and they're so often preyed upon by people that sell pre-need policies that are very expensive. And they say, you know, all your life you've been deprived and you haven't really, you know, you never really had a nice home and you didn't have a winter wardrobe and stuff or a summer wardrobe, but here is your chance, finally, to have something really nice. And it's only gonna cost you $39.87 a month forever. <laughs> so it's it's interesting. Okay, seven. Only funeral homes are all you now you know this one. Only funeral homes are authorized to sell caskets and urns. False. Okay, where are some of the other places? Walmart.com. <laughs> we really need to fine tune that, okay? Because otherwise, you're going to be really disappointed. You're going to wear yourselves out going to the Walmart looking for those caskets and urns, and they're not in the store. <laughs> Ditto for Costco. Okay. But they're out there. And of course, in addition to Costco and Amazon and Walmart, there are plenty of um, businesses online that that's all they sell. And we actually have a casket store here in Austin. Collier, remember Collier's Magazine? Collier's Affordable Caskets. He's up on North Lamar near 183. So you might wanna jot that down and ask Bill Collier to show you what he has. He'll meet you at his showroom and you can see. Sometimes it's really nice to see something more than just a picture of what you think you might want to have. Yeah. Number, yeah. Do you need a casket if you're going to be cremated? Or no. Oh, no. No. As of now, if you want a service before you're cremated, that's no longer what we call a direct cremation. It's gotten a little more involved, and it's fine. You might want a visitation and a funeral service. The funeral homes have something that they're going to um, tell you about called a rental casket. Oh, rental caskets are, are very interesting. 
Uh, the opening is at one end of the casket, or I should say an additional opening. And what they do is they put the uh, body um, in of the liner, because that's what you're really paying for, is the casket liner. And uh, going in, you know, one of the short ends, they slide the body in the liner into the rental casket, which is what the public sees at the visitations and the funeral services. And then when that's over, um, everybody's gone home, uh, the funeral people, uh, slide the liner back out with the body in it and they put it in the cardboard container that goes to the, the um, crematory rental casket several hundred dollars okay let's see eight oh this this is really important put a big star because um, I talked to a lot of uh, groups that people have purchased prepaid funeral contracts it's really important as time goes on not to start saying to your family, honey, don't worry, it's all taken care of. That's so easy to do that, isn't it? But it's not. Because funerals involve some additional charges that are not under the control of the funeral home. Funeral home can't call the shots, for example, the uh, death certificate. They collect the money, but then they turn the money over to the county. Okay, death certificates, $21 for the first death certificate and $4 for each additional death certificate ordered at the same time. So that's not included in the prepaid funeral contract. Or some of them, I've seen Neptune Society throw in one. <laughs> Their prepaid contract includes one death certificate. But believe me, you're going to need more. And it's always better to order a few more than what you think you'll need. Because if you have to come back around, you know, a few days later or a few months later and get more death certificates, $21 for that first certificate all over again. Another example, especially if you're going to have a service, flowers, who knows? What, what a florist is going to charge for flowers to put on the casket 17 years from now? The obituary. Who knows what the newspaper may be charging seven days from now? <laughs> Not to mention 17 years from now. If, again, you're going to have a service, maybe you're going to have a, a singer, some, or, and you're going to have an officiant, a minister, or a rabbi or something, Maybe you also want to have it um, at a house of worship that actually has kind of a rental fee. Maybe um, you're going to have a little reception afterwards with refreshments. All of that is really, the prices are going to be what they are at the time of need. And there's no way to anticipate when you purchase a pre-need what those prices will be. So. Just, you don't want your family to go into shock and say, wow, mom said it was all taken care of, but there's this and this and this. Even uh, like right now, if you die in Travis County and you're going to be cremated, there's a $25 medical examiner's permit fee. I hear a voice. Is it at the door back there? Are they saying finish up, Nancy? No. Okay. Uh, number nine, if my family, or, oh yeah, orders death certificates, the cost of the first certificate is more. Well, I already blew that one, didn't I? Okay, so that first one, just think, first one's 21, and then you can get five more for 20 bucks at $4 each. So why not uh, spurge a little and um, get a few extras? You never know when they're going to be needed. Number 10, the cost to open and close a cemetery plot is included in the cost of the plot. Well, again, that's another thing. Uh, you don't know how much the company with the backhoe is going to charge to remove the dirt from the plot maybe that you purchased eight years ago and put a grave liner in there if the cemetery requires a grave liner of some sort. 
so that the lawn mowing continues to go smoothly. <laughs> and sm by smoothly, I mean evenly. There's no divots in the ground. Okay, that's, that's really the purpose of a grave liner. And uh, the, the funeral home, uh, believe me, they have fancy grave liners that they call vaults. And you, especially if you get a metal casket, let's go back to that dusty rose, beautiful metal casket. If you're a matchy matchy person like I am, it's very tempting to want to buy that dusty rose colored metal vault. But it doesn't do the job any better than simply a concrete grave liner to keep the ground uh, even once the dirt has been put back in the plot. More questions? Yes? What's a grave liner? A grave liner really is a box. It's a big, sturdy, rectangular box that's put into the ground, and then when the family comes to inter the casket, the casket is lowered into the box. So it's not biodegradable? No. <laughs> That's why um, the grave liners are not permitted at natural burial cemeteries, but um, I don't know. I, uh, I used to be pretty good friends with the woman that uh, got Eloise Woods going, uh, Ellen. <laughs> she named it after uh, a family member, um, her grandmother, El Eloise, or whatever. Um, <clears throat> Ellen has since moved to New Mexico. But anyway, when it was Ellen Cemetery, I know for sure that she would go out and check the graves and when there had been any sinking of the settling of the uh, ground because there was no grave liner, she would add dirt to even it back out. Well, because um, there's not a whole lot of dirt above the uh, concrete box, so it's just there. I mean, it's like a barrier. Oh, got it, got it. Yeah, and the dirt, and the dirt just piles up on top of the box, and, and there's nowhere else for it to go or sink any further. Yeah, I have a question. Yes. How much is the membership? It said lifetime and it also said one year on your slide. I think it said a lifetime. Yes, it is a lifetime membership. I don't know where it said anything about one year. It's a lifetime membership for $35 and it covers everybody that lives in your household. And so, uh, but I have to say, it, oh, I'll tell you what, we are so... You know, people that are into marketing probably think that we're really naive and let them think so. We are proud of the fact that we tell our members, and this is true, we ask for our members to make an optional supporting donation one time a year. Sue Gilliam, is that not true? Right. Once a year in the, the summer newsletter, we say, okay, it's always optional, but if you would like to help us uh, keep going, we appreciate a donation in any amount. And when you donate, there are no follow-up appeals. I don't know about you, but I have donated to organizations that I really thought what they were doing was really important, like the Red Cross after the mass the Bastrop fires. Well, then, there was just a landslide of further mailings and appeals and again and again, and I'm just going like, oh, I just, you know, I just felt so conflicted. Like, I, I just w almost wished I hadn't donated because now here's more and more and more. We don't do that. And when you donate to uh, Ambus, a uh, funeral consumer, you get a very special personal note from Nancy. <laughs> Well, that's true. We, we give you a, you know, we write you a thank you note with our tax identification number at the bottom um, because that is also useful for uh, tax deduction purposes because we're a 501c3. Virginia has a question. Yes. Uh, I'd like to join the organization. 
because I have questions that I don't even know I have. Mm -hmm. So would that be a, a way to get answers to those questions? Um, well, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of useful information in the member packet. There will be a complete set of these advanced directives that I mentioned, uh, having to do with your medical care and also the disposition of your remains. There will be the funeral home price survey and the cemetery survey and another thing called the final arrangement plan and our card. Listen, I, boy, I may leave this building, but I'm not gone. <laughs> I love doing this. This is the best job I've ever had, and I love questions. I especially love questions that I don't know the answers. I get really excited. You know, if you all ask me something this evening that I don't know the answer for, I'll get your name and I'll get back to you. I will go home and get that answer before my head hits the pillow. That's how I found out about morgues on um, cruise ships. So um, we're always available, and I'm telling you, we serve the community. We get plenty of questions from people. Um, actually, they're all over Texas. We don't just get, you know, from the five counties that we serve. We do our best to serve everybody, and I, I just love that about us, if I don't say so myself. Well, did you have a question, Charlie? No. Well, if you have, oh. This in my last question, but okay, say my fam, say when I go, and my family just wants to take my body straight to be cremated, uh, then you don't need a casket or any of that. That's right. And that can be done by the family. They can take it directly. Um, it's it, you know you need to use a funeral home. Okay, the family cannot take the body to themselves to a crematory, okay? I think there would be a funeral home. Yes, there is a crematory. Here. Um, there were two um, crematory operations here in Austin, and for, for some reason, I just don't know what the backstory is, one of them just closed. But they're, they serve only funeral homes. They won't deal with the public and um, this is where that mystery, mysterious crematory fee comes from. And also you need the, the funeral home to uh, get that death certificate uh, for you and so forth. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, my son died recently in a hospital and the hospital, uh, they gave me a list of crematoriums. One was Heart of Texas Crematorium. And I don't know who took him there, but they took care of that, and I think it was that $595. That's right. Woman. They're the 595 people. Yeah. And then, the, you know, <clears throat> so uh, they were very good, but I, there was no funeral home involved. Oh, no, they are a funeral home. Oh, okay. Yeah. But they don't have, like, uh, a fountain out front? Well, or <laughs> even, you know, a place that I could tell where there was, you know, where you could have a service. Yes. I mean, one reason why they're 595 is because um, they're really, it's a small building. They have an office area. They have a, um, a consultation area with the family. They also, and, and then right in the back of the same building is where they have the cremation retort. That's what it's called, a retort. Um, and, uh, but they also have a, um, a, uh, a window, because I have a friend that stood there in, in the back of the office area, and he watched them roll his wife's body into the cremation chamber. And the um, family can also, if they want to, request to actually push the button to start the cremation process. So but that's why they're so affordable, because they're small, and they can actually make all the arrangements online. You don't even have to go in. Yes, heart of Texas we're talking about now. Yeah, the most, they're out on 290 in West, West. Toward, going toward Dripping Springs. Well, Nancy, you are a wealth of information. And thank you for the questions, everyone. And if you have some additional questions, I'm sure Nancy said she'd stay till about midnight. <laughs> <laughs> but Barbara has to 
work tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I don't know who's going to come in and turn off this video. Well, thank you, thank you for your time, and please come back and see us. Well, just ask, and I'll be here. <laughs> Okay, um, I just want to tell you one more thing. I have a wonderful social worker, hospice social worker. If you want to know about hospice, she's fantastic. She comes and talks in my classes. And uh, I can, if you want kind of some specialty information, like you want to just do a whole session on whole body donation, I can come back and help you with that. Yeah, why don't you submit some ideas to me, um, and I'll work with I work with Robin, of course, and as part of the wellness committee, and we're always looking for ideas, and if this is something that appeals to a number of people, we'd love to do that. I think an outside hospice individual would be great to work or listen to. Absolutely. And, um, yeah. and would there be a chance of getting you to teach your eight-week course here? <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to you ask know, that think, another time. You know, I think if we could get sufficient interest, yeah. uh, I could come and uh, teach you uh, yes, what, what I do in my eight week, eight weeks, eight sessions. Yeah. Would you have the time, Nancy? I can make the time. Well, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Because there's so many questions that we don't know we have, like Virginia yeah. said. Right, right. And, and, and it's so hard, you know, I, I've known you for five years and I still haven't gotten done some of the things I need to get done. Well, I'll tell you what, if I come back and we do, you know, uh, every week for eight weeks or something, <laughs> I'm really going to put the screws to you about completing those advanced directives or examining the ones you've already done and actually refreshing them and possibly adding some supplemental requests to flesh them out because the living will in Texas is very narrow in scope. So you would have some homework. <laughs> that would be good. That's, that's one of your students. <laughs> Well, thank you for thank coming you, here. Everyone. I know thank it's you. not everyone's favorite topic, but my hat's off to you for coming this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you.